back in May 2022 at the Munich High End Show, I was in one of the atriums and I saw a display that I thought was really very interesting. And I'm going to show it up on the screen now. And yes, it was a hi-fi cable, but a hi-fi cable with a very interesting and unique design. And I know <laughs> full well that hi-fi cables are a very contentious issue across the audiophile community. But I think, you know, designs like this are likely to be of interest to the large majority of audiophiles. And I have always had an interest and a passion in the different, you know, effects of hi-fi cables and how they can affect the sound of a system. So I've traveled out to Southwest Germany to meet with Inacoustic, who are a very long established a hi-fi cables manufacturer of all varieties, price levels and more. Really interesting business with a, with a history, a history in music production as well. And I'm here at their facility, which you can see behind me, kind of that whole it's kind of landscape that you can see there behind me. All of those buildings are their facility. And I'm here to try and learn as much as I can about the company. But more interesting is to find out about their unique designs. And I've brought you along with me, obviously the camera and everything with me. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. So Sven, can I just say to you, firstly, thank you very much for hosting me and allowing me to come out and see you here out in this beautiful part of Germany. And obviously a thank you to Karma AV, obviously UK distributor for you know organizing things as well. And I just thought I'd ask you initially to maybe tell us a little bit about Inacoustic as a company and maybe what makes Inacoustic unique because there are a hell of a lot of you know hi-fi cable manufacturers across the world and I think it'd be interesting to find out what, what you, how, what, yeah, I suppose what you feel or how you feel in acoustic is a unique manufacturer. We are on the market for quite some time. We were founded in 1977. And I always say we do more things right than we do wrong, otherwise we wouldn't be there. Um, one of the main things is that we produce in Germany. Like we have several quality lines um, and the top range is coming 100% from Germany. We do it manually. We have people who develop the products and it's not like we, we take products from the spool and just make nice connecting. Uh, we really hand build the top range ourselves. And this is something I think that's quite unique. And also we, are, uh, we have our own cable factory inside the company group, um, which is a big advantage because uh, we can talk directly to the factory and, and get things th sorted out. And another thing, which some people don't know, uh, we, we also are a music label, and we, so we know how the music uh, sounds when it's recorded uh, or playing live, and we know how it, how it sounds when it comes out of the hi-fi system. So it comes from, from, from there until uh, how you enjoy it uh, when it comes from a system. So I guess the, the, the circle is closed there, if, I, if that makes sense. Well, you've mentioned some really, really interesting things there. And, and to be honest, we're shooting this at, at pretty much at the end of my trip. And I've already seen around you know, the, the production and seen a lot of really interesting things. And, and the music label side of things is also really interesting. But despite everything that you know, I might show in the video or people might read and see, there will still be a lot of audio files that you know, still think that cables can't make a difference or don't make any difference. Um, and you must come up against that all the time and you must have come up against that for, you know, since the 70s, you know, since the early days. So what, what does a manufacturer say to that and how do you feel about that kind of mindset that exists? I mean, they, they make a difference if, if, unless it's wireless, if there's no cable, there's nothing. <laughs> so it's either uh, you hear something, or you don't hear something. The thing is, what do people hear and what do they expect? And if someone is critical, we don't want to change their their, their way of thinking. We rather say, hey, a good cable doesn't sound, shouldn't change anything. So we rather uh, give them the chance to make their own experience. We rather, hey, try it. If you like it, keep it or, or, or get it. If, if you don't like it, well, that's your opinion. That's, that's okay. Um, but we don't want to preach uh, or, or, or tell them what, what to think because uh, it makes a difference. But uh, we also don't say, hey, it sounds better. We rather say, yeah, it sounds different. And it, it makes a difference, but please find out yourself. And that's, that's a good way of doing this, because then everyone uh, can, can, can do what they, they like. And, and, and it's not like you, you have to persuade them. So that's, that's the way we, we do that. Which I think is a ni nice way to approach it, again, because everybody's got, uh, beyond believing, I think, in whether something does or doesn't make a difference for, for a system, it's, 
you know, their own system, isn't it, in their own space. And I've always felt that, um, you know, each individual is going to go about things in their own way. And it's, how can you predict how something's going to sound when you don't know their room and their speakers and their amplifiers and stuff? It's very, very, very difficult. Um, but the reason why I came here is to learn more about your, your technologies and, and the reference air cables in particular. So I'm just going to pass over to a different bit of video where we look at all those products in detail. I'm Holger from Inacoustic Germany and I'm responsible for the product development here in, the, in this uh, company. Um, so, and my main thing is to develop cables, cables for you. And uh, one of the babies is, uh, are the, the, the air cables in the reference series. So we are really proud about this technology because it's really famous and it's a uh, un, um, unique uh, style of cable because we are using air as an insulation material. Um, so this is uh, a fact that uh, the air is the best insulation material you could use for audio cables. Um, so this is um, one um, thing we, we learned many years ago and during the years we always try to, to increase the amount of air inside the cables. And uh, with the air technology, we reach really a high amount, nearly 100% of, uh, of air inside the insulation. Um, so the structure is really unique because, uh, and also the, the, the way of assembling the cable is uh, very unique because it's all handmade, it's no machine we can use for it. Um, so even the raw material, the raw cable has to be uh, assembled by hand, step by step. So uh, we have to, to put the, the wires into the clips by hand. We have to, to put the shielding on the wires by hand. We have to put, uh, of course, uh, the, the plugs on it, the soldering work, everything we have to do by hand. And this is only for, uh, to have finally a higher sound quality in your system. So I got a sample here for you. Um, so from the, the air technology, and you can see here, this is the, we call it helix style because the wires inside are formed like a helix. And uh, due to this style, this cable is also very flexible, um, even if it has this uh, huge dimension. Um, and you can see also the, the copper wires inside or even silver wire. Maybe we talk later about the, the pure silver as well. Um, and you see that there is nothing between the wires. Um, and you can imagine or you know if you have um, um, some clothes which have a high amount of, um, of uh, uh, plastic or something, synthetic material, and you take off these clothes, you hear the crispy noise, and this is electricity. And the same is in insulation material. You always have uh, electricity charged um, or stored inside the dielectric material. And of course, we don't want to have this effect. We just want to pass the audio signal, the, the cable, and we don't want to have any influences uh, by, the, by the insulation material. And that's why we try to reduce or take away all the insulation material to reduce this effect. And I would put it a little bit closer to the camera so you can see that there is no, that there's no insulation material except the tiny clips here, which keeps the wires in distance and um, in place so that we have this helix structure. Okay, not only the insulation material is important for a good cable, of course a conductor is also important. So no conductor, no sound of course. And we also focus on the, uh, on the conductor. It's not just a simple copper wire. Uh, in case of the air technology, of the air helix structure, we are using this so-called waveguide. Uh, that means we have in the center of the wire, um, we have a, a part inside, a non-conductive part. Um, and around this part, we have a braiding of pure copper. Uh, and each tiny um, 
each tiny um, strand of the copper is protected with a thin skin of a lacquer to protect the copper against oxidation. Uh, and this whole structure uh, avoids any skin effect. So skin effect means if you have a, a frequency on a wire, uh, the low frequency uh, are able to use the whole cross section of the wire, but higher frequencies can just use the skin of the wire. That means uh, for the lower frequency, they can use the whole cross section and higher frequency just can use parts of the, uh, of the, uh, of the cross section and they have a higher resistance. To avoid this, we um, simply uh, remove the center part of the, of the whole cross section. So finally, the resistance for the whole frequency range is always the same. This is why we uh, developed this particular style of, um, of waveguide. You can imagine that it's very difficult to remove this uh, lacquer during the assembly process. But we have to remove the lacquer to have a good contact between the wires and the conductors. Uh, sorry, the wires and the connectors. Um, so uh, the first step after um, preparing the cable, the raw, the raw cable, is um, we have to remove the lacquer um, and it's, it's, um, it's not easy. Therefore, we also develop a special machine uh, which helps us to remove precisely the lacquer of the, of the copper before we go the next step assembling with the, with the crimping or the compressing of the connectors. Putting these wires into the clips, of course, it's, uh, it's difficult uh, and must be done all by hand. So there's no machine who is able to, to put the wires in these uh, this clips. And therefore we also developed some helping tools um, which hold the clips in line in, and in position and then we can carefully put in the, 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 the wire into these clips and afterwards we, we click them together um, and uh, uh, realize this helix structure. And this helix structure is very important um, because if it's just in one row, the, the cable would be, become very stiff uh, because if you, if you bend the cable, the, the one on the upper side will be stretched and on the side below will be compressed. So it's no way to, to bend the cable if there's no helix structure on it. To realize a speaker cable of, let's say, three meter length or whatever, we need hundreds of clips and we have to pull this wire through hundreds of clips. And it's not just one wire. Depending on the type of cable, we have four, eight, 16 wires or whatever. And this really takes a lot of time to assemble this cable and put every part together. Assembly doesn't stop. Uh, after putting in the wires into the clips, we also focus on the connectors and we also develop the fitting connectors for each cable by ourselves. This is one sample um, of connector for, for the speaker terminals. Um, there's, there's some technical details of it, like, um, like the connection inside is uh, not uh, made with soldering or with a screw. It's compressed with 1.5 tons directly on the copper, so there are no losses um, between the cable and the, the connector. One more detail, you know, this is a 4004 speaker cable as an example. It's not very, really heavy, but it's more heavy than a standard cable. Um, so in, in some cases, it's difficult to put it inside the amplifier or in uh, the speaker terminals or what. So we have a bendable plug developed, which you can um, t uh, twist in the, the angle you need. And afterwards, there's a tiny screw inside. The, the set comes with a, with a, a tool. And after it's in the right position, you can fix it. Um, and then you have a proper uh, style of connection, not a heavy weight on the terminals or not loss of, uh, of space or something. Um, and furthermore, the material we're using for the connectors is a not brass, which is very common in this, in this um, particular connectors. Brass, it's a, it's a good material, but uh, the connectivity is much lower than of, uh, of pure copper. 
What we use is so-called tellurium copper, which is a, a alloy of, uh, of copper and tellurium. Uh, the advantage is that the, um, the, the, that material keeps nearly 100% of the conductivity of copper, but it becomes hard enough for, for this application. So pure copper would be too soft, brass is too bad in terms of the conductivity, but the tellurium copper is really combining both high connectivity and also hard enough for this job. As mentioned, the air technology, the air helix structure is done all by hand. So it costs a lot of money, of course, to assemble this cable. And uh, many people are asking if it's possible to develop a more, um, let's call it cheaper uh, uh, cable, not in terms of the quality or something, uh, but in terms of the, uh, of the total amount they have to spend for it. So that to, to catch the, the balance between the price of the equipment and the price of the cable. That's always also important to have a good balance. Um, so and therefore we consider how to um, realize this kind of cable to have a kind of air technology but uh, to save some money during the, the assembly process or the manufacturing process. So I got a raw a sample of a raw cable here of the micro air. This is uh, the 204S cable. Um, so, and if you take a closer look on the wires, uh, I just open the, the cable a little bit to make it more visible. You see that there is a tiny braiding on each single wire. So that is what we call the micro air technology. Because in this braiding, there's also a lot of air inside um, or in between the, the braiding. And this braiding also keeps the wires on distance and puts also a lot of air in between the wires. So we have a similar effect than the, the, the air helix structure, not as good as the air helix structure, but, very, but uh, much better than a standard insulation um, like PVC or polyethylene or whatever is used on standard cables. Hello, my name is Marius Ingold and um, I'm by in acoustic since two years and a half and my position or my main task in the company is that I'm uh, responsible for the power products. So there are um, power cables and power stations. Our power station starts with um, two filters, so or we can say three boards. Um, three mainly boards. We have a DC reaction or DC suppression. Then we have a filter board one and we have a filter board two. Filter type one is here for um, analog devices, so it's optimized for analog devices. And filter type two is optimized for digital devices. And we have found different filter circuit get a better result with uh, analog or, or digital devices. Every hi-fi chain is different. So maybe I have four digital devices and two analog, or maybe uh, four analog devices and two digital devices. So um, I have a modular um, power station so that we can use different um, types of 
of filters so we get the optimized or the best result in our hi-fi chain. <laughs> The design of power cables is very important for our sound or the sound in our hi-fi chain but the, the construction of a power cable is also important for the safety conditions. So we have to create power cables that are very um, safe and uh, safe for the customer and with this test we, we make a CE certification or a CE um, test procedure um, to get a safety product. We, we want to minimize the, the loss um, on, on our power cable and with the air technology we, we can minimize farther and farther and farther um, because with, with air we, we minimize the, the capacitance into, in the cable and with the air helix construction and, and many conductors in the cable. We minimize the inductance um, with many wires. We, we get a higher cross section and so with this, this technology um, we, we minimize um, our power loss over, over the cable and so we get a better hearing result and the, the hi-fi chain um, sounds better. All our power products are designed and manufactured here in-house and also then made in Germany. So I'm at the end of my very interesting trip out to Germany to see in acoustic and the weather's been amazing while I've been here. It's been extremely hot and as you can see behind me the sun is really shining. But it's been a fantastic trip and I feel like I've learned a lot because in acoustic was a company that I didn't really know too much about before obviously visiting them and there's some things that have really stood out to me about the company, about how they work, about how they manufactured products. I mean, firstly, it's definitely been the design, the, the reference air cables. The design is really interesting. And what I didn't really understand with the cable design is just the way it works and how clever it is and how the, what looks like a lattice of, of cable, which actually looks like a shield of sorts, is actually the conductors, the conductor design. And that's really, really interesting and very cool to see. And the fact that the conductors are almost in free air with air being, you know, the best, con or best dielectric material really makes sense. It really makes that product range, I think, make a hell of a lot of sense. And you can see why there could be benefits to the design and there could be benefits to sound quality. I've really been impressed with the manufacturing standards, the way the ladies and the gentlemen have been working, building the products. They make it look easy, but I can assure you the processes are really not easy at all. And it's been very interesting seeing how the reference air cables are made from start to finish because there's a whole lot of handwork or hand processes that have to go on just to get, you know, the cable section kind of through the clamp system that in acoustic have designed. That is a really clever, unique product and, and as I say that the laboring and very labor intensive in, in terms of putting it all together so it, it kind of makes sense why a product like that would be more expensive because there's a lot that has to go into it in terms of making it a product yeah from raw materials all the way through and obviously from design all the way through. What's also been impressive I think is the size and scale of the in acoustic business you know seeing the reference air products is really cool because it's the flagship stuff it's the in, in a way they're really interesting stuff as an audio file but looking around the warehouse and just picking up random boxes you know they manufacture lots of real world products as well I looked at some real world you know aerial cables and some real world 
uh, optical cables and these are products that would be real world priced so it's not like they're only manufacturing crazy expensive crazy high-end stuff they're literally trying to manufacture not just a range of products for all audio files but i think a range of products for anybody that needs any type of audio or video cable and i think that's the bit that that makes them a little bit unique in a sense that they're not just a you know an exclusive high-end audio file cable manufacturer they are a manufacturer of a whole range of products and they have a lot of the, well, they have all of the manufacturing done in house. All the actual, literally from from the end to end, all the cable manufacturing. You know, from even from the premium, even from the more entry level products, all the way through to the really expensive stuff, it's all made in house. And again, that's a really impressive thing to see. So I suppose maybe my only regret has been that I haven't had a huge amount of time to spend really listening to systems and really doing any AB comparisons with the cables. Unfortunately, I was due to fly out here much earlier than I was able to. Uh, my flight got cancelled. There's been a lot of trouble with flights and stuff from England recently. My flight got cancelled, which meant I got out here later than planned. And I haven't had as much time out here, but I've really tried to make that time count. I've really tried to get as much of it on camera for you as possible. I've tried to interview as many people as possible and talk about as many products as possible. So overall, it's been a very interesting trip. I feel like I've learned a hell of a lot about in acoustic as a company. I need to thank them because they've been wonderful hosts. They've been very understanding and accommodating of everything that I've asked of them. Um, and they've answered some very you know, technical, in-depth um, questions, really. It's a company that seems like they've got absolutely nothing to hide. And I like their philosophy in a sense of, you know, try the products for yourself, try them for yourself. If you like them, you buy them. If you don't, you know, no harm done. Hopefully I'll get to hear some at some point in the future. That's kind of the only bit I suppose that's missing from the trip. But I've had a fantastic time, a really fantastic time. I've tried to make the best video I can for you guys. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've yeah, got something out of it. And if so, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already. So thanks again for watching the video and I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.